In this video, we're going to explore some of the models that have been used to explain psychological responses to sport injury. The first group of models we're going to look at are grief response models, which are sometimes called stage models. Grief response models assume that an athlete will react to an injury in a similar way to which an individual might respond to a significant loss such as the death of a loved one. This suggests that injury constitutes a form of loss to the individual. Kubler-Ross's 1969 grief response model, which was originally developed to explain responses to terminal illness, has commonly been used in early psychology of sport injury research. The model is comprised of five stages. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression and acceptance. It is suggested that following injury, all athletes progress through each of the five stages in order. Whilst these models are intuitively appealing, they do have limitations. The main limitation is their rigidity. They assume that every athlete is the same and that consequently all athletes respond to injury in the same stereotypical way. In practice, that's simply not the case. Different people respond to injury in different ways. For example, one person may be totally devastated by an injury, whilst another person with the same injury who has been underperforming recently may see the injury as an escape from or an excuse for that poor performance. Such an athlete is unlikely to demonstrate, for example, a period of depression because they may actually be quite happy about being injured. Due to these limitations, cognitive appraisal models have come to be more widely accepted as models of psychological response to sports injury. In contrast to grief response models, cognitive appraisal models take individual differences into account. In other words, they do not assume that all athletes will respond in the same way to an injury. Instead, they suggest that how an individual appraises the injury will dictate their psychological responses. It is therefore the perception of an injury that affects psychological responses rather than the injury itself. Brewer's 1994 cognitive appraisal model, shown on screen now, suggests that how an individual appraises their injury, their cognitive appraisal, is influenced by two variables, personal factors and situational factors. Personal factors include things such as personality, age and previous experiences of injury. While situational factors include things like the stage of the competitive year and social influences such as a coach or teammate's reactions to an injury. The model suggests that how an individual appraises their injury, their cognitive appraisal, dictates their psychological or emotional response to the injury. The model further proposes that these emotional responses will affect the individual's behaviour in relation to the injury, for example, whether or not they will adhere to their injury rehabilitation programme. Brewer's model is a fairly simplistic cognitive appraisal model. In contrast, the integrative model of psychological response to sport injury is a more comprehensive model that has been widely adopted in sport injury psychology research. The model was developed specifically for sport injury and unlike the other models, it incorporates psychological factors that can increase the risk of injury as well as psychological responses to injury. Like Brewer's model, the integrative model suggests that cognitive appraisal is dictated by personal and situational factors and provides a wealth of examples of these. Cognitive appraisal then impacts on the athlete's emotional and behavioural responses and recovery outcomes. So how are these models relevant to people involved in supporting injured sport and exercise participants? They're useful in helping us to understand how and why individuals might respond in a particular way following injury, which might help us to identify appropriate interventions to prevent or minimise psychological difficulties. Additionally, we can look at the models and identify factors that are within our control that can have a positive influence on the injured person's recovery, such as social support. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching.